Happy weekend from Fexture Life. If you've been too busy to keep up on the latest in the games we cover, or are looking for a refresher, we've got your back. Let's take a look at the comings and goings across the Fexture Life Wiki Network. Bandai Namco has released a new launch trailer and screenshots for Dark Souls 3 The Ring City, the final DLC for From Software's Brutal RPG, which is releasing March 28th for the PS4, Xbox One, and PC. The launch trailer starts off with a scene from the Ashes of Ariandel DLC and then proceeds to show the content from the announced trailer, followed by a sequence of new footage that shows some of the new enemies, weapons, spells, and bosses that the expansion will bring. Additionally, they have released several new screenshots with descriptions to feast your eyes on and dig into for the weekend. The screenshots go into more detail of the story and the characters that we are going to be learning more about when we play. Call us optimistic, but we're getting a very strong wrap up all the loose ends vibe from this expansion. Perhaps some of these nagging questions that lorehounds have had for years will finally be answered. Check out the blog for a full collection of the shots and their corresponding captions. The newest patch arrived this week for Dark Souls 3 and brought with it new arenas for the Undead match for owners of the Season Pass or if you own either of the two DLCs. The patch also brings PS4 Pro support and a ton of changes and balancing fixes to the game. It seems just about everything got tweaked. Be sure to check the patch notes on the wiki for the full list. So what are your thoughts on the trailer, screenshots, and the patch? Dark Souls 3 is looking to enter its twilight with a solid final DLC expansion. And players who have yet to take the plunge can check out the Fire Fades Game of the Year edition, which collects the base game and both of the DLCs in one package. It's set to release later in April. Bioware's long anticipated Mass Effect Andromeda released this week worldwide for the PS4, Xbox One, and PC, and we have a host of resources available for you at launch. These are just a few of the very useful pages on the wiki to help you on your way. Check the skills page to plan your loadout and decide which of the three skills you're going to equip at one time. Visit the profiles page. There's no more classes in the game. Instead, you can switch these presets on the fly. Check out the characters page to get to know your squad and the skills that they bring to the table. The weapons page will show you all of the new galaxy tech that you're going to be able to play around with. Check out the Nomad page to learn all about your all-terrain vehicle and how you can upgrade it. The Tempest page has an overview of the new ship where you and your crew will spend most of your time. And finally, give the missions page a look and a bookmark. We're pumping out walkthroughs for the main story and side quests, of which there are numerous. On our YouTube channel, we've also got launch day mission walkthrough videos for you to follow along to. Later in the week, Bioware released a patch for Mass Effect Andromeda that addresses some launch and early access issues. Check out the patches page on the wiki for the full notes. Square Enix has previewed the details for the upcoming DLC for Final Fantasy XV called Episode Gladiolus. The story chapter will let players play as great sword wielding party member Gladiolus as they explore his backstory and motivations. While Final Fantasy XV focuses on the bond between Noctis and his friends, Episode Gladiolus allows players to find out what happened when Gladio leaves the party. While the main game system was designed around Noctis and his mobility to warp and dodge enemy attacks, Gladiolus fights by blocking and counterattacking with the new Valor and Rage system. In the DLC, players can access a whole new area that was previously not accessible in the main game. By completing the episode, players will be able to obtain special items that cannot be acquired from the main game. In addition to the main episode, two additional gameplay modes, Score Attack and Final Trial are available upon completing the episode. These modes offer an added challenge and high replay value for the player. The launch trailer shows a much more unique and focused setting than the main game and looks like it'll be telling a very different story. What are your thoughts on the DLC? Picking it up? It's going to be $4.99 on the PlayStation and Xbox One stores. A couple of images of promotional posters have surfaced on the internet that seem to state a September 8th release date for Destiny 2 along with the pre-launch beta. Activision has already confirmed on a couple of occasions that the sequel to Destiny was on track for a release in fall 2017, and we know that Bungie has a massive development team working on it. Recently, Bungie said that characters would be carrying over, but that progression in gear would not. Beyond that, 
Any changes to formula remain speculative. What are your thoughts on the posters and potential release date? The Age of Triumph launches for Destiny later this month and makes the old new again as it refreshes the old raids and make them all light level appropriate. Additionally, some older weapons are getting a bump back to light level viability. The entire event will be a send off of sorts for players as the game prepares to make way for its successor, which will likely make some significant changes to the game. This week saw the beginning of the Jester's Festival for the Elder Scrolls Online, a whimsical bit of fun that runs until April 3rd on the PS4, Xbox One, and PC. Outside the cities of Ebonheart, Vocal Guard, and Daggerfall, pavilions have been set up to host the festival. Jester's dress as three alliance rulers will appear at each location and offer challenges of foolishness to festival goers. When you complete a daily task for one of the Jesters, you'll receive a festival box that can provide some silly rewards. There are several possible rewards you can earn from these boxes, including Rune Box Cherry Blossom Branch, several recipes, a new hat called the Crown of Misrule, a host of fun new consumables, and some new Jester's Festival housing items. For the duration of the event, the Crown Store will feature some Jester's Festival themed items, such as some costumes, caps, masks, and personalities. There are a few achievements you can also earn for the festival, which you can find on the wiki page. Have fun getting silly! IGN released an exclusive 15 minute playthrough of Absolver this week that showed off some of the game's early tutorial missions. In the video, we get a look at some of the hand to hand combat that is the game's trademark as well as some moves, gear, and environments that we're going to be exploring in the game. Sparring is going to be the name of the game in Absolver and players will be able to mentor others and teach and learn new moves. Feints, dodges, and a highly customizable deck of moves will really let players dig into the game's nitty gritty. This game does not look like a Dark Souls clone despite the combat similarities and seems like it will really satisfy PvP enthusiasts. And that's a wrap for the Weekend Wikis. We're looking forward to another great week of gaming fun. Don't forget to check out our VIP program for some exclusive supporter benefits, and budding writers should take advantage of our Become an Author initiative. Thanks for a great week, and as always, keep checking in with us for news, reviews, YouTube streams and videos, and general wiki goodness. Follow us on social media for all the latest and greatest. The more followers we get, the larger the army of the Fexus grows.